Well, Wendy, we have been here in Port-au-Prince for over a week now, and I can tell you that uh, the devastation here in Haiti compares to nothing I have ever witnessed. And, of course, it's not just here in the capital city. This week we had a chance to go to a town that's about uh, 20 miles west of Port-au-Prince, where it's estimated close to 30,000 people may have lost their lives in the quake. It once stood as a testament to Haiti's strong Christian heritage. Now the fragile frame is all that's left of the oldest church in this country. We don't know where we're going. It's like Haiti is finished. The people are finished. It's like the people don't have hope anymore. The church was the heart of Leogan, some 20 miles west of Port-au-Prince. The town took a beating from the earthquake. CBN News took a ride on motorcycles to survey the damage. Almost every building is destroyed. Most of the homes are also damaged. You know, I've covered uh, several wars and natural disasters over the years and nothing, absolutely nothing compares to what I have seen here in Haiti. It's just absolutely unimaginable. I mean, here we have, look at this, we have a house that's right smack in the middle of the street. The level of damage, extent of damage is just immense. And the fact that it happened here in Haiti, I think makes it just all the more sad. No one knows for sure, but the estimates are that between 20 and 30,000 people died in just this one town. And because much of the world's attention is on Port-au-Prince right now, many here are feeling forgotten. We are not getting any attention here. We have also suffered a lot. Why isn't anyone coming to help us? Help finally came Thursday. A Catholic relief agency partnered with the United Nations to deliver tents, food and water. Because of the extent of damage, the reality is that there are still many places beyond this town that have yet to receive aid. One week on, many can't imagine how Haiti can recover from this earthquake. We feel so miserable. We have lost everything, our homes and our jobs. Where do we go from here? To try to speed up aid deliveries, the U.S. is sending in more reinforcements. Some 4,000 troops, originally bound for the Middle East, will join the 12,000 American men and women deployed to the region. The United Nations is meanwhile adding a couple of thousand more soldiers and police officers to its peacekeeping mission in Haiti. Back in Lugan, Father Curran worries about the long-term rehabilitation of his community. I know the aid will eventually reach us, but what about the future? Who is going to rebuild our homes, our churches? And survivors of the quake have found their lives changed forever, turned upside down. For some of them, that includes a profound change in their spiritual life. And that's something that could literally transform this nation on a much deeper level. 69 years ago, as a teenager, Anne-Marie Paulisten decided to become a voodoo mambo or priestess. It was back in 1941, a long time ago. She moved into this neighborhood in central Port-au-Prince and gained quite the reputation. Pastor Camille Deravines got an earful from her when he decided to open a church in the area 13 years ago. She told me that we had one year to get out of the neighborhood or else she'd kill all the members of my church by putting a curse on us. Then the earthquake happened. I was in the living room with my daughter when it happened. I managed to get out, but my daughter died. This is what's left of our home. A few yards away, Pastor Deravines experienced similar loss. His church and home were also destroyed. Paula Sten and Deravines are now homeless. Both have now become friends. That's right. After years of harassing the church, the witch doctor and pastor have a new friendship. And Paula Sten is only too happy to lean on him as they walk the streets of their neighborhood. No matter what I need, he helps me. When I almost died in the earthquake, he was there to help me. His church took me in. I now live here in this camp with other Christians who have also lost their home. The Christians in the camp hold nightly praise and worship, and to the surprise of many here, Polistan is a regular attendee at those evening services. Oh yes, I'm there, I'm there. I've not converted to Christianity, but yes, I'm always there. Just ask them. The Haitian government officially recognized voodoo as a religion back in 2003. More than half of the country's 9 million people are believed to practice voodoo. But for this 83-year-old, the earthquake brought serious doubts about her religious practices. I'm going to leave it. I'm going to leave voodoo. It has brought me nothing but anguish. 
a sentiment that Pastor Deravines has heard repeatedly over the last few days as Haitians struggle to understand their hardships. So many people are accepting Christ almost every day. Right after the meeting, some walk forward to proclaim their new faith. Haiti's problems aren't just physical. You see, across this city, hundreds of churches have been destroyed like this one, others severely damaged. Several prominent Christian leaders have also lost their lives in the quake. Still, pastors like Deravine say all they can do is hold on and pray. This is a time of revival and God's going to restore our country and more people will deepen their faith in Christ. And Haiti's churches, as you can imagine, have also been devastated by this quake, but its leaders uh, say they believe God can uh, bring good even from this terrible tragedy.